the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 182 From the First Book of Chronicles The Ark Placed in the Tent And they brought in the Ark of God, and set it inside the tent which David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord, and distributed to all Israel, both men and women, to each a loaf of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Moreover he appointed certain of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord, to invoke, to thank, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and second to him were Zechariah, Jael, Shemiramoth, Yehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael, who were to play harps and lyres, Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jehaziel the priests were to blow trumpets continually, before the Ark of the Covenant of God. David's Psalm of Thanksgiving Then on that day David first appointed that thanksgiving be sung to the Lord by Asaph and his brethren. O oh give, thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Remember the wonderful works that He has done. The wonders He wrought, the judgments He uttered. O offspring of Abraham His servant. Sons of Jacob, His chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of His covenant forever. Of the word that He commanded, for a thousand generations. The covenant which He made with Abraham. His sworn promise to Isaac. Which He confirmed as a statute to Jacob. As an everlasting covenant to Israel. Saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan. As your portion for an inheritance when they were few in number, and of little account, and sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Touch not my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And He is to be held in awe above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before Him. Strength and joy are in His place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering, and come before Him. Worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before Him, all the earth. Yea, the world stands firm, never to be moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult, and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the wood sing for joy. Before the Lord, for He comes to judge the earth. O give, thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For His steadfast love endures forever. Say also. Deliver us, O God of our salvation. And gather and save us from among the nations. That we may give, thanks to Thy holy name. And glory in Thy praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. From everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen. And praise the Lord. Regular worship maintained. 
So David left Asaph and his brethren there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister continually before the Ark as each day required, and also Obed-Edom and his sixty-eight brethren, while Obed-Edom, the son of Jedithan, and Hosea were to be gatekeepers, and he left Zadok the priest and his brethren the priests before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings to the Lord upon the altar of burnt offering continually morning and evening, according to all that is written in the law of the Lord which he commanded Israel. With them were Haman and Jedithan, and the rest of those chosen and expressly named to give, thanks to the Lord, for his steadfast love endures forever. Haman and Jedithan had trumpets and cymbals for the music and instruments for sacred song. The sons of Jedithan were appointed to the gate. Then all the people departed each to his house, and David went home to bless his household. God's Covenant with David Now when David dwelt in his house, David said to Nathan the prophet, Behold, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. And Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, You shall not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I led up Israel to this day, but I have gone from tent to tent and from dwelling to dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and violent men shall waste them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will subdue all your enemies. Moreover I declare to you that the Lord will build you a house. When your days are fulfilled to go to be with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from him who was before you, but I will confirm him in my house and in my kingdom forever and his throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words, and in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. David's Prayer Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house? that thou hast brought me thus far. And this was a small thing in thy eyes, O God, thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast shown me future generations, O Lord God. And what more can David say to thee for honouring thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. For thy servant's sake, O Lord, and according to thy own heart, thou hast wrought all this greatness, in making known all these great things. There is none like thee, O Lord, and there is no God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. What other nation on earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his people, making for thyself a name for great and terrible things, in driving out nations before thy people whom thou didst redeem from Egypt. And thou didst make thy people Israel to be thy people forever, and thou, O Lord, didst become their God. And now, O Lord, let the word which thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast spoken and thy name will be established and magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, is Israel's God, and the house of thy servant David will be established before thee. For thou, my God, hast revealed to thy servant that thou wilt build a house for him, therefore thy servant has found courage to pray before thee. And now, O Lord, thou art God, and thou hast promised this good thing to thy servant, now therefore may it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee, for what thou, O Lord, Hast blessed is blessed forever. From the Book of Proverbs The simple acquire folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow down before the good, the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is disliked even by his neighbor, but the rich has many friends. He who despises his neighbor is a sinner but happy is he who is kind to the poor. Do they not err that devise evil? 
those who devise good meet loyalty and faithfulness. In all toil there is profit. But mere talk tends only to want. The crown of the wise is their wisdom. But folly is the garland of fools. A truthful witness saves lives. But one who utters lies is a betrayer. In the fear of the Lord one has strong confidence. And his children will have a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. That one may avoid the snares of death. In a multitude of people is the glory of a king. But without people a prince is ruined. He who is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. A tranquil mind gives life to the flesh. But passion makes the bones rot. He who oppresses a poor man insults his maker. But he who is kind to the needy honors him. The wicked is overthrown through his evil doing. But the righteous finds refuge through his integrity. Wisdom abides in the mind of a man of understanding. But it is not known in the heart of fools. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. A servant who deals wisely has the king's favor. But his wrath falls on one who acts shamefully. From the Second Epistle of Paul to the Corinthians Further Warning This is the third time I am coming to you. Any charge must be sustained by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned before and all the others, and I warn them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again I will not spare them, since you desire proof that Christ is speaking in me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful in you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we are weak in him, but in dealing with you we shall live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves, to see whether you are holding to your faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. I hope you will find out that we have not failed. But we pray God that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. What we pray for is your improvement. I write this while I am away from you, in order that when I come I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority which the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Final Greetings and Benediction Finally, brethren, farewell. Mend your ways, heed my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. From the Catechism Baptism in the Economy of Salvation Prefigurations of Baptism in the Old Covenant In the Liturgy of the Easter Vigil, during the blessing of the baptismal water, the Church solemnly commemorates the great events in salvation history that already prefigured the mystery of baptism. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. Since the beginning of the world, water, so humble and wonderful a creature, has been the source of life and fruitfulness. Sacred Scripture sees it as overshadowed by the Spirit of God. At the very dawn of creation, your Spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The Church has seen in Noah's Ark a prefiguring of salvation by baptism, for by it a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. The waters of the great flood. You made a sign of the waters of baptism. That make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. If water springing up from the earth symbolizes life, the water of the sea is a symbol of death and so can represent the mystery of the cross. By this symbolism baptism signifies communion with Christ's death. 
But above all, the crossing of the Red Sea, literally the liberation of Israel from the slavery of Egypt, announces the liberation wrought by baptism. You freed the children of Abraham from the slavery of Pharaoh. Bringing them dry shod through the waters of the Red Sea. To be an image of the people set free in baptism. Finally, baptism is prefigured in the crossing of the Jordan River by which the people of God received the gift of the land promised to Abraham's descendants, an image of eternal life. The promise of this blessed inheritance is fulfilled in the New Covenant. Christ's Baptism All the Old Covenant prefigurations find their fulfillment in Christ Jesus. He begins his public life after having himself baptized by St. John the Baptist in the Jordan. After his resurrection Christ gives this mission to his apostles, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Our Lord voluntarily submitted himself to the baptism of St. John, intended for sinners, in order to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus' gesture is a manifestation of his self-emptying. The Spirit who had hovered over the waters of the first creation descended then on the Christ as a prelude of the new creation, and the Father revealed Jesus as his beloved Son. In his Passover Christ opened to all men the fountain of baptism. He had already spoken of his passion, which he was about to suffer in Jerusalem, as a baptism with which he had to be baptized. The blood and water that flowed from the pierced side of the crucified Jesus are types of baptism in the Eucharist, the sacraments of new life. From then on, it is possible to be born of water and the Spirit in order to enter the kingdom of God. See where you are baptized, see where baptism comes from, if not from the cross of Christ, from His death. There is the whole mystery, He died for you. In Him you are redeemed, in Him you are saved.